o'clock. Time to get started in our service. We're so glad to have you with us tonight. Uh, I'm glad for those that chose on the night that a whole lot of people don't uh, celebrate Jesus this particular calendar day. We are. And we're so glad Amen. to have you with us tonight. And we've seen some miracles today. God did some wonderful things. I, I told you some of them this morning, and I won't take time to go into all of them, but for two months straight, uh, the last day of the month, God sent somebody by to give an offering. Uh, and most, both times, neither one of them went to church here. And this one of them came here today and gave me an offering. And uh, as far as I know, he had never been here. And uh, I know the other one had never been here. And, uh, you know, uh, two days ago, you know, three days ago, it was a lot behind. And I keep hearing that voice say, trust me, trust me. If I know it's the last day of the month, God does too, you know. Yes. And uh, so he's just been answering prayer for me, and I thank him for it. Uh, let's pray tonight for all these. Uh, Brother Ralph wasn't feeling too good this morning. Sister Wilson's not feeling real uh, good, a little stopped up. Uh, but uh, we're here, and uh, it was so good to have, uh, have uh, Dee Dee with us, you know. Uh, we've just been praying for her, and she's been wanting to get back. Debbie's mother, if anybody don't know her, she's been a friend of ours and coming here when she can for years. Used to be my mom's best friend. You know, they'd go places together. And we're just so glad to have her here today. Amen. Keep praying for all those men sick. Sister Gail's stepmom, Betty, we're still praying for her. I've been praying for all of us that I can remember every day. And I just feel like God's doing miracles for her. Joyce is doing much better. Uh, I had talked to Chuck today, but uh, We've been praying for her, and I'm not going over all the lists. I'm just going to go ahead and worship the Lord tonight. But I just think it's amazing and wonderful what the Lord has done. Uh, Toddy starts her treatments in the morning. Be sure to pray for her. She went to see Jeremy today because he's going to be deployed, and she wasn't sure how weak she'd be and whether they'd even let her go with so many days and when he's going to be deployed. And uh, they got back a little while ago when we called him, and uh, I think they're going to to make it tonight and uh, we just uh, we just thank God for what he's doing she told me the trip went well uh, she, she stopped every little bit and rested a little bit took a little longer than normal but uh, she got to see her son before it gets deployed and that's good and uh, just keep praying for them pray for the church uh, you know help me out I'm, I'm just not going to use the list tonight anybody have one up here you want to help me out anybody alright well, what about up here been seeing God do miracles lately, brother, and you, you know, why would he give somebody else a miracle not give you one? I can't tell you a reason. Amen. So when we pray, uh, let's anoint you. Amen. Let's just believe God. And pray for Rhonda and Mr. Her today. It's good to see those that are here. Anybody else have a prayer request? Keep praying for Dee. She had a problem with her foot swelling, and I know something about that, and so I went back there and just prayed for both of her feet. Believe God to touch her. Amen. Go down. Anybody keep praying for John? He has special needs concerning his job. Pray for Sister Wilson. Uh, keep praying for her. Marsha had one. Uh, keep praying for uh, Kathy Adams. She's in a lot of pain with that. Um, they're talking about rehab and stuff like that. So just keep her in your prayers. I'll talk to her mom a little bit today. So um, also pray for a, a homeless man. His name is Gene. A few years back, we had a homeless man there in Dallas. Seen him several times, talked to him, and uh, something happened. He got sick and he died. And so now there's another one, and uh, his name is Gene. Saw him yesterday when I went in the store. So when I come back out and got my car, the Lord just told me to go over and talk to him. So I went over there and I asked him, you know, I said, Are you homeless? He said, Yes, ma'am, I am. He said, um, I said, You got family? And, you know, he started saying, he, You know, I think he's kind of not around his family that much or whatever. But anyway, I said, do you know, I said, do you know that, that Jesus loves you? And he said, oh, yes, ma'am. He said, I ask him every day to help me. And so, you know, I gave him a piece of money like, you know, I felt the Lord, you know, wanted me to do. But just remember, I told him, I said, I'm going to pray for you. He said, thank you very much. His name is Gene. God knows who he is. So just, just remember Gene. Amen. Anybody else here in the middle? Actually, we got a whole bunch of people that, uh, that 
Juneteenth mountain that we pray for is homeless. Mm-hmm. We have just one lady, and that's all she does all day long is ride around the beach and eat clothes and stuff. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and believe God for that. And uh, also Susie and all the requests yeah, on the prayer line. Thank you, buddy. All right. Good to see Todd come in. I told him I thought you were coming. Amen. And uh, we're glad to have you tonight. Anybody else to pray? All right. Let's just let Tommy come and lead us in prayer and start the service. Let's have a good time with the Lord tonight. Thank you. offering we bring it to the altar tonight lord god we ask your blessings on us lord god 
Father, you've been good to us, Lord God, so we just praise you and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Glory to God.
glad it's going to be made right. And I'm glad that there, it's no secret what God can do. Praise the Lord for that. I'm glad he's my best friend.
I think it was uh, somebody, my good brother Samuel, that said, I, I leave every morning with him in my hand. I've been a TV preacher, I heard you say that. But all that stuff, I just feed. I said, God, if they can get in your hands, I can get in your hands. If you can keep them in your hand, maybe Brother Eric the other night, maybe that's who it was. But if they can keep you in their hands, you know, uh, keep, if they can stay in your hands and nothing comes against them, Lord, that you and them can handle, that's wonderful. And I thank God for it tonight. These two verses, I'm going to break these two verses down and just preach this a little bit, problem. I won't be all that long. I don't think, but I ain't making no promises. Amen. Amen. Uh, verse 19 said, In the same day at evening. I thought about what a privilege it is to know that God comes when you need him. Amen. Amen. He's there at evening. Amen. He was there the same day. Uh, you know the story. They crucified the Savior. Uh, he was gone, and for fear of Jews, they were hiding out, as I said. And the Bible said, that when you need him, he'll be there. Amen. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Uh, being the first day of the week, that's when they need to start their week. I mean, you know, I, I thank God. I hadn't heard that about you, Paul. Was that today? A couple of days ago? Uh, I thank God for it. I mean, I've staggered around this week, and I'm doing better today than I've been doing. I thank God for doing better. Amen. Thank God for all that he's doing for all three of our churches. Uh, you know, uh, seem like you start the day with God, you pray, you talk to God, and then one little slip of your foot or something, and you're in trouble. Uh, you know, yesterday, uh, in McDonald's land, uh, line, land, line, whatever you want to call it, I was there, and uh, I was admiring this uh, woman's car, how pretty it was, it was a new Lincoln, and I hit it. Uh-oh. And my foot slipped off the brake. I should have been looking at my brake, not that new thing. But I mean, it sounded like Betty's car and her car was tore up. And I got out there with the scratch on the car. Amen. I mean, you know, and uh, she was a little upset because she'd been sick. She started crying, and uh, she wouldn't move out of the McDonald's line. She's up there to get her food. So you know what happened? It was two lines all the way to Frankie. And uh, so I'm sure people got mad. And well, Nasty said, now I got out, I said, ma'am, you hurt? She said, no. I said, well, I'm not either. I said, I don't see any damage in the car if you want to get out and look. She said, I'm not moving this car to my husband gets here. And I said, all right. Good thing he didn't live two or three miles from there because she was have been there tonight. Amen. Amen. And if she wasn't going to move, they'd have sit, me and her would have sat like Donald down. Amen. And uh, it didn't happen. And I thank God for watching over us. He's there when you need us. Amen. Had a couple of trials similar to that this week. And God took care of every one of them. Amen. Amen. You know, I know. You know, it's not by might or by power, as you sing. It's by His Spirit. And I know that when you feel the Spirit of God or when you try to feel the Spirit of God, your foot will slip off the brake, you'll slip off the ladder. I mean, just thing after thing after thing, the devil keeps going out there. Your shoulder will go out. Your back will go out. Something will happen in your life. That the devil will sit back and do this, but I told you this morning, me and him don't agree. I hate him when he hates me. Amen. Yeah, right. Praise the Lord. But the, when you need him, he's there. Being the first day of the week, and then it said when the doors were shut. I thought about what doors represent when I'm studying this today. I thought doors are to keep things out or to keep things in. Amen. And and God knows how to use those doors. Amen. If we know what need to go out. He'll open them. Amen. If we don't need to go out and nothing don't come in, need to come in on us, he'll shut them. Amen. Amen. And I believe that he shuts doors nobody can open, and he opens up those doors that nobody can open and shuts doors that nobody can shut. Somebody say amen. That's right. Amen. I believe that. Amen. And where the disciples were assembled. Amen. I thank God he's a right now God. He takes care of us right now. I mean, it wouldn't have been no good. He wasn't, uh, he, he could be, it was, but I mean, for them, he wasn't down there at the pool of Bethesda, amen. He wasn't on the Jericho Road at this time, amen. He wasn't in, uh, you know, the part of Galilee. He was right where they were, amen. amen. I'm telling you, we could ever get that in our uh, thick skulls or thick heads, you know, and realize that 
that God is right where you need us. Amen. I, 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 didn't, I didn't choose to hit that car, and I didn't deliberately hit it, and I don't think I'm crazy or nothing like that to make me hit it. I think it was just a car I wasn't used to, and my foot slipped off. Amen. Once it slips off, there ain't nothing you can do if you ain't got two or three feet. You're going to hit something. Amen. And uh, I just thank God for taking care of me, taking care of her. But I just realized today that he's there where you are. He knew where I was at. I'm glad that he, he, he didn't have to GPS and see if I was at McDonald's or Wendy's. Amen. He knew where I was at. He knows where you're at. He didn't have to get down there and say, well, which one of these buildings are they in? He knew where they were at. He knows where you're at. He knows the trial you're in. He knows how dark it is. He knows what turning the lights off in your life. Yeah. He knows the very thing that made the darkness come all around you. Amen. Amen. He can lighten the load. He can lighten the way. I just believe that with all of my heart. Amen. Amen. And then they were assembled <laughs> for the fear of the Jews because they killed Jesus and they, uh, you know, just a primitive, primitive, just a few days they were going to kill Stephen and and there were going to be other martyrs, and they'd been martyrs, and Paul uh, got on the scene throwing people in jail. So they had it right. The Jews didn't like them. The Jews didn't like, uh, 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 you know, them telling the truth. They, 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 they wanted to abide by the law. Some people stuck in a rut, and they wanted to just stay in the rut. And so the disciples were ready to get out of the rut. Jesus was trying to get them out of the rut, and, and everything around them was telling them, no, 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 you can't do that. And so they were faithful to God, and they went to hide. I hear that all the time on the mission field, that they have to seek out a little hut to go in and pray because they kill them. I mean, I, I just think I, I compared those churches this morning uh, to America, and I don't know how many people in America could handle that. Amen? I mean, you know, uh, they like to go. I passed the church this morning where it was full and flowing over, but, you know, when I come by there, I, we weren't here for an hour, but when I come back by, they, they were out there playing sport. No wonder they had the crowd, you know. They were out there playing games, and I ain't talking about no church. And that's all right, having something, fall festivals or whatever. But I'm telling you, they flocked out. They looked like they were dressed to go to church. It couldn't have lasted very long at all because before I got back there, they were playing. Amen. And Jesus said uh, that... The church world reminds him of kids playing in the marketplace. Amen. Amen. we got to be careful about not doing that uh, because I'm telling you today, it doesn't matter what caused you. If it's a, if it's you hit a car or your back's hurt or you're on the ladder, and your fear is of the devil. Amen. And I, I have to watch it all the time. I mean, you know, uh, one night during the Bible, I just uh, throw my hands up and praise the Lord. And, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, before I could look back down, I thought I was going down, you know. And I just caught myself, and, and I didn't go down, and the Lord called me, whatever the case is. I thank God for it. Don't you? I thank Amen. God yes. that he's there. Whatever reason that you got you there, because his body quitting on you, he can heal. Body That's right. Body stripe, you're healed. Yes. Amen. If you're sad, he can lift you. He can give a garment of praise for the Spirit of heaven. Yes. He can turn sorrow into joy. He can turn pain and the healing. Amen. amen. He is God. He knows how to do that. Somebody say amen. amen. And I believe he'll do that for you tonight. Uh, and he knows why you're there. Amen. And he knows where you are. And I, I believe he's going to speak peace to somebody tonight. He said he spoke peace unto you. Amen. I believe that God is doing that for us. Amen. amen. And the devil don't like it when he speaks unto us unto us and over us and unto the devil uh, concerning us because when he does, E.F. Hutton hadn't got anything, amen, amen. that amen. compares to that, amen. amen. I know they say on uh, te television that they say that, that, you know, when he speaks, people listen. Maybe that's what's wrong with us. We're listening to the wrong voices. We need to realize that when he speaks, he speaks. He knows my name. I know his name. Somebody hear me Amen. Isn't Amen. that wonderful? Amen. Amen. Uh, Jesus stood in the midst where they were and proclaimed peace. And I'm telling you what, it was there. Verse 20 said, when he had so said the word. That's all you have to do. You remember the story when the disciples were going to the other side. He said, let's go to the other side. The first verse of the next chapter says, 
and they went to the other side. In between there, there was a storm. In between there, they thought they were going to die. In between there, they woke him up. A lot of things happened in between. The Bible says when Elijah was praying for rain, in the meanwhile, amen, while the, the, the servant was coming back and said, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing, go back again, there ain't nothing, there's not nothing, there's nothing, not nothing, nothing, nothing. The devil likes you to think that all the time, that you've got nothing, amen, people make jokes about it. I saw a sign in a restaurant one day, said, I, I started out with nothing, and I managed to keep, keep it all and I got most, most of it left. The nothing that I started with, I got. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm telling you, I don't want to say that. It's the same thing as saying doom and despair and agony on me. Yeah. You speak that stuff and you'll have that. I, I got up the other morning. Uh, I listened, I think it was from Swagger during the night. Got up uh, talking to God and, and laid down there and just listened to it. And the choir was singing the song Heaven used to sing, Jesus. To the fence, build a fence all around me. And I began to pray that. I woke up the next morning and said, What are you singing? I said, Something I heard somewhere. Amen. <laughs> but it's in my spirit. Amen. And I didn't know the song, but I, I, I looked it up today. And I'll come back to where I was at there about Jesus speaking the word when he says it. Amen. I believe it's important. I believe he can speak it. I don't believe the devil can reverse what he said. Bible said he blessed and said he would bless and I cannot reverse it. We've got to believe that. But that song just, uh, Jesus be a fence all around me every day. Every day. Not just Amen. once in a while. Right. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel all along the way. So, I mean, a couple of people told me in the last two or three days, pray for traveling mercy. Well, that's what this song said. Jesus build a fence all around me. Protect me. Everywhere I go as I travel along the way. Amen. And then I like the part where he said, I know you can. And the choir says, yes, Lord, I know you will. And the choir says, yes, Lord, fight my battles. Yes, Lord, if I be still. Yes, Lord. Jesus built a fence all around me every day. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, we ought to be praying for that. Amen. If we fall off a ladder, if we bump a car, amen, if our foot swells up. If we have problems that we can't do anything about, if, if, you know, that, uh, if, if, we, if we're turning his head, if we're turning 91, as Brother Wilson is, I don't think he cares. He's my inspiration. I mean, you know, is that inspiration? Yes, because if God blessed him, he blessed me. I heard a preacher Amen. say that if, if, you, if your neighbor gets a blessing, so don't get mad, don't get jealous, get glad, because that means God's in your neighborhood. That's you know? right. Amen. I'll leave that. I mean, somebody saw the, the, the public spirit house man come up to their house, everybody on the street run out and try to make sure they was getting to them, they was getting to them. Y'all just thank God. I mean, that will go away. If it won't go away, you'll go away. If you hold that money and you die, you'll leave it here. Yeah. Uh, when we leave it all behind, that means the troubles and trials and aggravations and anguish and all the things that goes with that. But it also means all the things that we hold dear to us, you know, our, our possessions, our things that we have. We have to be careful of what we get caught in the middle of our money, our stuff. You know, when uh, uh, Saul was king and uh, he wanted to be king, God didn't really want to be king, people wanted to be king. And uh, God wanted David all the time, but David was just a kid, and God used kids. I've seen where some of those uh, people that reigned as kings started at 8, to eight 7, 12. I mean, you know, there's no a limit. I know preachers that started preaching when they were 8. Jimmy Swagger said he did. Jim Burrell, that we used to listen to, said he started preaching when he was 9. Preached his first sermon. I saw him when he was 20. Looked like he'd been preaching 50 years, as near as I could tell. He was so anointed. But we don't have to wait. We just have to trust God. We have to believe God. And we have to believe that God's near to us. That's what it said. And we have to believe that he will fight our battles if we be still. Amen. Amen. Jesus build a fence all around me. Amen. I want you to protect me. I, I trust him. Amen. Amen. I trust him. I told you uh, when you come in tonight, in the last two months, on the last day of the month, we was hundreds of dollars behind and along the last two, day of the month, two months in a row. Amen. Somebody hear me? When I quit my job and, and the 
first full month that I quit my job, somebody come in that don't go to church here, somebody come in that had never given me a penny before and gave me a big gift that brought it up to where it needed to be at the end of the month. I'm telling you, I, and I just dropped my head because I looked at it the other day and we were $700 behind bad bills this month. $700. And I said, God, you know there have been times when I had this is not one of them. Amen. Yeah. And uh, 100 came in and 50 came in and 100 came in. And it went up the last three or four days. And a day a stranger come up and gave me the rest of it and a little more. Amen. Glory to God. And Amen. I mean, God, he says, God, God Amen. takes care of it. God will take care of us. I walked around. I could hear those words that he said to me, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Trust me. I mean, they're known all over the world for getting chants started. I wish we could start one in the church and say, trust him, trust him, trust him, trust him, trust him. That we just start trusting the Lord and believing that God was going to take care of us no matter what happened in our life. Amen. When he had so said, the word came from mercy. He showed him his hand and his feet. The devil don't want you nobody to ever see that because he don't want you to know there's power in the cross. Amen. And there is a message at the cross. Amen. Uh, I passed the church and said, we preach the, the crucifixion. We, cruci we preach the crucified Christ, and we all do. But don't forget to preach the resurrected Christ. That's Amen. right. One that's not in the tomb anymore. Yes. That tomb is empty. All that remains is grave clothes and blood stains. Isn't it? Amen. Amen. That empty tomb, the devil will like you to forget about it. They would like for you to know everything about the hills. And I don't know the pictures we have all around over the walls and on things. Is, is this like he looked or not? Because I never seen him. I feel like he's probably close. Uh, Josephus and some of the historian writers that wasn't in the Bible wrote things about it and wrote about what they saw and what he looked like. And it, it wasn't, uh, you know, like today when everybody's got a camera on their phone. Everybody take a picture out of it and all that kind of stuff. Somebody hear me today. Come on. I just believe that. I believe that he's still God. If, if I get to heaven and find out he don't look nothing like in pictures, I'm not going to say, I'm going back home and he will stay here. Because you know what you look like. Amen? Amen. You know what I have you look like. Amen? Praise the Lord. I mean, the hard thing, you know, me, I have a change. I can see somebody 25 years ago and they'll walk up and say, you brother Chambers, they were 12 year old and they don't look nothing like that. You know? <laughs> And I just look them in the eye and they say, you, don't you remember me? I say, help me. Help me remember. Tell me where I've met you at. Tell me whether I sold your car or whether you come to my church or whether you prayed for me. Somebody hear me. Yeah. I mean, not too long ago, there was a woman coming up to me and she said, and she's <coughs> probably as old as I am. And, and she said, and I had forgot about it. She come up to me one day and I was young. I was in my 20s when this happened. And she waited until I was in my 50s and come up and said, you remember me? I said, I don't. Help me. She said, and she's a preacher. I, she said, I used to work at Hardy's down there on 321. And she said, you come through one day and you stop the traffic to go back up there and give me money that, that I gave you too much. And you helped me keep my job. I, had never, I can't remember it now. Amen. <laughs> And I'm telling you, somebody's watching your life. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I, if you don't remember, we don't stay the same. People try. Some people don't have any trouble. I just look like this when I'm 20 something years old and I still look like this. Amen. I don't try, it's just what it is. Amen. Maybe if I tried to change things and look different, then people wouldn't have known me. Amen. 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 But I, I'm telling you, I don't mind that people know me. I don't mind that people look me up and Realize who I am, amen. Uh, it, it doesn't matter about all of that. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. It just matters that, that we're shining that light, amen. that we're allowing that light to shine. I'm telling you, if he don't shine through us, you know, we can't we can't do it. People pray for doctors, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, people pray for this and that and the other. All these things take place, amen. Amen. Somebody hear me. Amen. Right. They get all excited about it. But I'm telling you, I tell them all the time. I said, I pray for everybody that has surgery. I pray for the Bible says one plants, one waters, and God gives any grief. If the doctor cuts you open and takes all your disease out and God don't smile on you, 
those staples and those stitches are going to rot and fall out. You've got to have God's blessings. You've got to have God's yeah. sunshine. Yeah. You've got to have him shine in your life. And he will do that in your darkest hour. Amen. 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 I believe that. Amen. Amen. Then, when we realize the word, amen, the disciples were glad. Amen. Amen. They weren't weeping because they hadn't hung their hearts up. Amen. Amen. They were in trouble. It was dark. And one of them had quit. Judas had quit. But the eleven had not quit. Amen. I'm telling you, you got to look around you and say, quit if you want to, but I'm not going to quit. Amen. Don't serve them if you don't want to. But right. The word says, choose this day who you'll serve. Amen. Is God's been good to you? I mean, you know, there's a song that said, somebody ought to testify. God's been good to you. Somebody ought to wave your hand. Yes, amen. Lord. Yes, amen. Amen. Y'all not let the devil stop you. Amen. amen. I used to like the song, that we, I still like it. We just ain't sung in a while. But I like that song. If I could not say a word, I'd just lift my hand. Amen. I'd just wave my hand. Yeah. I'd just praise him. I'd do something. I'd wiggle my toes or something. I'd do right. something to let God know. People when lies about to get out of, of us, you know? You know? When life's about gone, we, 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 we get blown excited and they'll squeeze our hand. If they'll blink their life. Amen. There was a song a few years ago, I wish you'd just squeeze my hand. If I can't trace you and I can't feel you and my face weak, I just wish you'd squeeze my hand. Amen. Just let me know you're still there. God will do that for you yes, if you amen. want him to. He'll build that fence and put you in the middle of it. Amen. Amen. Somebody here. Amen. We want him to be that part of it. He will. That's when the light shines. That's when he comes in and everything's all right. And we can take it for granted that blessings are on the way. We come back to the music. Come through within a word or two. Amen. Amen. They were glad. They hadn't hung their hearts up. They realized, I, I'm telling you, they realized that uh, that wasn't what they wanted to do. Because they probably no doubt read that word. For David said, by the rivers of Babylon, we hung our hearts up. And we wept when we remembered Zion. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Nine men should have been from the ends of this life. There's not anything but the present. Amen. But I'm telling you, nine men and could have been and possibilities and all that, God can bring them to reality. Amen. We have a reality check that preaches this morning Amen. that what don't exist, God can... He said you got to call those things that are not as though they were. Amen. Amen. Please do that. Please do that. Amen. Amen. They weren't weeping. They still had their hearts. They had not them up. And God was still with them in their life. Amen. And he walked in with the door shut. Amen. I mean, we're so quick to say there's no way God could get in here. There's no way I could get out of here. Talking about a God that, that don't stop. That don't stop the door. That don't stop the man. That don't stop because they changed something. Because the Bible said, He said, I am the Lord God, I change. Stand you free. If you need something tonight, the altar's open. If anybody's texting in tonight, we'll pray for them. He walks in the cold.
Thank you, praise the Lord. That's all of them. Believe God, you're going to do it. Amen. Know that He will, know that He can. Jesus will with me and follow me. Amen. I want you to say tonight, God, I need you. I need you to build a fence around me. God, I need you to touch my life and my heart tonight, God. God, just build a fence around me. Would you do that? Would you ask Him tonight? How many like God to put a fence around me?